afternoon. Hello? Good afternoon. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so my name is, uh, is, is, is Michael Wade, so I run a research center here at IMD on digital. I'm also a faculty member. So digital is a big part of what I do and what I think about uh, uh, these days. I am also um, work with your industry quite a bit. I have clients that are in your industry. I'm a big fan of luxury timepieces, but as a nerd, I'm conflicted. You can see here. I'm conflicted. So I, 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 want to s I want to be a little bit controversial uh, today about my thoughts about uh, digital as it relates to your particular industry. Now, the first thing I think which is clear is that there's a lot of hype today around digital. Would you agree? There's, there's a lot of hype. There is a lot of hype, uh, but there's also reality. I'm feeling slide envy after seeing Gerd's uh, presentation. So the, 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 the challenge then is to figure out what's uh, real and what's hype, and you're probably somewhere in the middle. So you have hype, uh, but you also have some things that are real, and figuring that out is not easy. But one thing is for sure, digital is interesting, and digital is cool. This is for sure. And digital has opportunities for you, and digital also has threats for you. And I think I can break it down very, very simply. It looks like this. Technology is growing and changing, as Gerd mentioned, exponentially like this. Organizations, are they changing? Sure, but they're changing more like this, much more slowly, because of legacy, because of resistance, because of all those things, and this creates the gap, and the gap is where the opportunities and the threats exist. So really the question is, how can you capture those opportunities and neutralize those threats. And I think to do that, you have to challenge, question some of those assumptions that you have. So here, here are some of the, the questions that I think that are the wrong questions. The first question, the wrong question is, how can we become more digital? And this is the question I hear a lot. I hear it across all industries, and I hear it a lot from your industry. I think it's the wrong question. Uh, but nevertheless, we spent a lot of time trying to become more digital. And in fact, the consultants are helping us, and they develop these digital IQ, which measures how digital you are. And, and you trip over yourselves to try and add more titles. So there's more digital people working for you with digital in their names. But I don't think that's the objective. The objective is not to become more digital. The objective is, well, the question is, the right question is, how do you use digital to improve your performance? Digital is a means to an end. It's a means to an end. It's, they're very good tools and technologies that are extremely important, and you need to use them. But the end you can't lose sight of, and the end is increased performance, increasing your revenues, reducing your costs, making sure that your customers are more satisfied, your employees are happier. All those things are the objective. The objective is not to become more digital. Next one, I hear a lot as well. How can we build a digital strategy? Again, I don't think this is the right question at all. Now, Gerd, in his presentation, showed a vortex. We also have a vortex. It doesn't look as nice as his vortex. But we have a vortex where we mapped industries based on their vulnerability to digital disruption. And one thing we learned is that this map, this picture, is changing rapidly. So industries that are in one place get sucked into the middle of this vortex, and they break up, and they recombine, and competitors are coming from all kinds of unconventional places that is difficult to predict. So we looked at this question of, of how you respond to these. Ch and, and if you have any doubts about how unpredictable the world is when you woke up this morning, you, were, you, you understood. It's extremely difficult to predict. So what do you do in an environment where this is extremely difficult to predict? You have to become more agile. You need to become more agile. And what does agility actually mean? When we broke it down, we realized it's not one thing. Agility is actually three things. The first thing is hyper-awareness. It's having a much more better and more advanced sensing capability of what's going on externally in the outside world, so your competitors, your emerging threats, your existing threats, regulatory changes, social changes, economic changes. That's one element of hyper-awareness, but the second element is internal. Do you really know what your people are saying and thinking? Are they really participating in your decision-making processes? So hyper-awareness is the first thing. 
But just getting the information is nice, but it, it doesn't get you where you want to go. You have to use it. And that's the second piece, which is informed decision making. So making informed, evidence-based decisions based on the data that you've collected. And many of us are not very good at doing this. We collect a lot of data, we have databases, we pay consultants to put fancy analytics tools together, and then we sit in a conference room and we make a decision based on our gut. We essentially ignore the data. But just making the decision is not enough either, you have to do something. And the third piece of being an agile organization is fast execution. It's acting quickly, turning decisions into action, experimenting, test and learn, acquiring resources, moving them to where they need to be quickly. So I think the right question is not how can we build a digital strategy, it's how can we build an agile strategy. Because I believe the companies that will succeed in your industry and others are the ones that are the most agile. Next one. I hear a lot. How can we use digital to provide more personalized experiences? Okay. And the promise is good. You collect a lot of data about your customers, and you learn about them, and then you can target them in a very personalized way. Sounds okay, right? What's wrong with that? Well, but I think it's the, exactly the wrong question. Let's, let me give you an example. I walk into a, 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 a supermarket, and I get a push notification on my phone, and it says, Welcome back, Mike. And I see a little flashing sign above the door saying, Hi, Mike. And I get a little notice, notice saying, we notice it's been five weeks since you bought cereal. Uh, and so we're going we're gonna to give you a discount of 20% if you go into aisle six. That sounds okay, right? Actually, I think it's creepy. I don't like that at all. I don't want them sending me those, th those notes. And it's not only the fact that I find it creepy. Even more than that, that particular day, when I go to the supermarket, I'm not looking for cereal. The fact is my toilet is blocked up at home. And I just want to get in there, find the thing, whatever it is, to unblock the toilet and get out. So not only if I, do I find it creepy, I'm also annoyed. So the key is not personalization. The key is relevance. You so the, the question is how can, you use, how can you use digital to be more relevant to your customers? Another example here, TripAdvisor, probably many of you are using TripAdvisor. Am I right? Yeah. So TripAdvisor now has a new feature called Just For You. They're just for you. So TripAdvisor knows a lot about you because you've been going to all these different places. So it bases its decision on that. So all the information it knows about you, you search, and it says, well, because I, I know you, I think this will be of interest to you. Again, it sounds okay, but if you go onto Google and you put the, the search query, TripAdvisor Just For You, this is what you get. Annoying, remove, turn off. Because it turns out that people don't want that. People want to know what other people think. So it's not relevant enough for them. So the key is relevance. In, in, in your business, it's very, very important. You know, if we have some Googlers in the room here, and Google likes to talk about micro moments, which, which, is, the, which is the understanding that what you find relevant changes day to day. It changes hour to hour, minute to minute, second to second. So they want to understand what your needs are in this second, and it's the same for you. Because a big decision about buying a luxury timepiece is something that's very context-specific. So you need to understand the context. Just knowing when my birthday is and sending me a, sending me a note wishing me happy birthday is probably not going to do it. But knowing when my son turns 18, that's important. Or knowing if I get a raise or a new job, that's important. So relevance should be the key. I think not personalization. The last one, and I hear this a lot, how can we digitize, insert the function? HR, marketing, e-commerce, whatever, operations, whatever. I think it's exactly the wrong question. Exactly the wrong question because digital by its very nature is cross-functional. It's cross-functional. You can't just touch one function. So we have a, a tool that we developed in our center called the Digitization Piano, which breaks down the organizational value chain into 10 different areas. And, and we push the, the metaphor, the image of the piano, to say that really to succeed, you have to play chords, not keys, meaning you're not going to do it just by addressing one particular area. You have to address multiple areas simultaneously. You have to play chords on the piano. 
And that's really hard to do because anything, as you know, in, 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 your, in, in your industry, it's tough anyway, but you have multiple brands, many of you. Your house is of brands, so you not only have the normal local global tension, you have local global tensions within the brands. So working across functions, across the piano, playing chords is extremely difficult for you, but that is the right question. How can we digitize across the organization? So that's it. I didn't want to take up too much time. That's all I have. Come on. There we go. Thank you.